The Religion of Pleasure The religion of pleasure is not a new religion. It is something that fallen mankind has enjoyed. People worship at the altar of pleasure. We live in an age of pleasure seekers rather than God seekers. We live in an age of eat and be merry, for tomorrow we die. The religion of pleasure is the religion of the flesh, and we must all be careful of this, because our flesh loves pleasure. And there is a pleasure that sin brings. You and I are not immune to this religion, the religion of pleasure. The human body craves after it. I am tired of Christians who attempt to pretend that there is no pleasure associated with sin. There is a pleasure that comes with sin. There is a pleasure that comes with sin that the fleshly man longs for. Don't let anyone lie to you into believing that there is no pleasure in sin. There is pleasure in fornication. There is pleasure in adultery. There is pleasure in sexual immorality. There is pleasure in sowing discord. There is pleasure in getting revenge. There is real pleasure in drugs. There is a real pleasure in alcohol. There is a pleasure in the sins of this world. But allow me to read you one verse. 1 Timothy 5 verse 6 but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. An ungodly person who is living their life for pleasure is alive but is as good as dead, since they are not living for God. The pleasure of sin never lasts. The pleasure of sin deceives because it never lasts. The pleasure of sin always attempts to make you want more and more and more. The religion of pleasure speaks of a strong affinity to satisfy the desires of the flesh. When you place the desires of your physical body above the demands of the Spirit of God, then you have taken up the religion of pleasure. Meanwhile, the Bible establishes the fact the demand of the Spirit is contrary to the appetites of the flesh. If we choose to obey and be in subjection to the Spirit of God, then we must put our bodies under subjection. But we cannot fulfill the desires of the flesh and please God at the same time. When we give higher consideration to our flesh and it is unrestrained desire, we are practicing the religion of pleasure. Because the only language that our flesh understands and flows best with is nothing but pleasure. However, 1 Timothy 5 verse 6 says that she who lived in pleasure is dead while she is alive. The word pleasure, according to that passage, is interpreted as excessive luxury, to be voluptuous or to be wanton. Before Paul made mention to this to Timothy, he was addressing how that true widows ought to live a life of total consecration to God. Thereafter, he stated that any woman who gives herself to sexual pervasion is dead while she is alive. This does not in any way exonerate men. Any man also who is given to lust and the religion of pleasure is dead while he is alive. The religion of pleasure is selfish. It pushes you to put your sinful desires above the well-being and the future of your loved ones. Fall in love with your family, 
put them before pleasure. Fall in love with your children, put them before pleasure. Think about how your sin can destroy your family. Think about how your sin could cause a division in your family. Pleasure can pull you away from your responsibilities. It can pull you away from your duties as a husband or a wife. Fall in love with your husband or wife. Fall in love with your children. They are worth more than the pleasure of sin. The pleasure of sin is deceptive. It will deceive you into thinking you can live a double life. You can't. You really can't. What secret pleasure do you have? What secret pleasure do you have? What secret pleasure do you have that your husband or wife or family know nothing about? It will destroy you. Sin is deceptive. Sin is destructive. Numbers 32 verse 23 Be sure your sin will find you out. Be absolutely certain that your sin will find you out. Be sure your sin will find you out. The religion of pleasure makes you make dumb decisions, stupid decisions. One of the biblical characters that practiced the religion of pleasure was King Solomon. In Ecclesiastes 1 verse 16 and 17 he said, I communed with mine own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate, and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge, and I gave my heart to no wisdom, and to no madness and folly. I perceived that this also is vexation of spirit. According to 1 Kings 11 verse 3, Solomon had 700 wives which were princesses and 700 concubines, and they turned his heart from the Lord. God gave Solomon wisdom more than any king before him, but the religion of pleasure made him a fool. Solomon was wiser than you or me, but yet the religion of pleasure made him make dumb decisions. Better men and better women than you and I have fallen to the religion of pleasure. You are not immune to this religion. Your flesh each day wants to worship at the altar of pleasure. This is why we are told, put off the old man and put on the new man. This is why we are told, put to death the flesh, because the flesh worships at the religion of pleasure. Solomon gave all that his heart, eyes, flesh, and appetite desired to himself, and at the end, all that it amounted to was vanity. It was sad that Solomon died before an idol. If the religion of pleasure led Solomon astray, we shouldn't think it will lead us anywhere better than it led him. Hebrews 11 verse 24 to 26 says, By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Here, the Bible points to the fact that, first, there is pleasure in sin, and second, that the pleasure of sin is momentary. It is only for a season. It does not last for long. One thing we cannot argue is that there is pleasure in sin. We know from our individual experiences that there is pleasure in sin. Although the pleasure may be momentary, 
The danger of the religion of pleasure is that such pleasure is suddenly cut off. When it is over, the individual is left in bitterness, humiliation, regrets, and nothing but destruction. The pleasures the people of this world are running after in our day was the same that Moses ran away from in his time. He esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. The reason many people choose pleasure in our day is because they don't understand the eternal consequence. If they do, they will rather suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin. Sin will always catch up with its victims. The wages of sin is nothing else but death. Sin is like a sweet poison. You can enjoy yourself while committing it. But the Bible says in Numbers 32 verse 23, and be sure your sin will find you out. Sin will find you out after you have enjoyed its pleasure for a season. The pleasure of sin is for a little moment, but the consequence of sin is eternal. The pleasure of sin is secretly enjoyed, but the wages of sin is publicly awarded. A day of reckoning always comes when sin will catch up with those committing it. No one would commit sin if it does not bring pleasure. The pleasure in sin is the bait by which the sinners are trapped. Sin feels good, sin is fun, sin promises excitement and allures us with the prospect of enjoyment. Sin deceives us with fleeting pleasure and to worsen the matter. Our adversary, the devil, also tries to hide the consequences of sin from us. Sin fools us into believing there will be no real damaging consequences for our action. We may suffer a little discomfort here or there, and sometimes have a guilty conscience for a while, but the payoff for the pleasure of sin far outweighs whatever consequences we might have to endure. Galatians 6 verse 7 and 8 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. The religion of pleasure leads nowhere but hell. No one given to pleasure can please God. People who walked with God were men and women who mastered the act of putting their bodies under subjection. Paul, speaking in 1 Corinthians 9 verse 27, says, But I keep under my body, and bring it into subjection lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. We must learn to walk in the Spirit so that we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh.